Am I too woke? Yeah, I mean, obviously too woke. It's, is that it? Can we just like finish the interview now? That is a lot easier. <laughs> Back to Snowflake Land. It's getting hot. You guys are going to melt. You can't turn on the TV without being told the woke mob has taken over. Woke culture is garbage. Woke scold culture is just the worst. Don't make yourself and your attempt to virtue signal more of a victim than the actual people who are being victimized. As people with opposing views clash online, we hear that people are outraged, silenced, or cancelled. There's a culture and an atmosphere on the left which seeks to shut down debate on topics which throws the word bigot and racist and xenophobe around like it's going out of fashion. But how did we get to this point? And what are the origins of woke and the backlash against it in the UK? Freedom dies when moral anarchy takes over. Their fear is that the dam's going to break and then what was once seen not acceptable becomes acceptable and then it gets further and further and further and before you know it, it's the last days of the Roman Empire. Hello, come in. Sorry, mind the cat. Absolute nightmare. Come on, get down. Let's have a cup of tea, shall we? Because some people would say you're the wokest person online. The wokest person online. It's not a word that I would ever embrace because it was a word popularised by black people in America to talk about heightened consciousness and awareness of issues around them. But also it's then just been used as a pejorative negative term by people who, who often, I suppose in my mind, just have a problem with the onward march of the rights of minorities, which is just a long-running saga. This video is about the backlash on woke. What do you want to look at? I want to see why is it any different from basically what we've always had. I want to understand what is aggravating about where I stand on this. I want to learn, you know, learn myself. What am I missing? What's driving people who, who see woke as dangerous, this menace? I want to learn what is it about it? What, what, I want to see what makes it tick. <laughs> when looking at the backlash against woke in the UK, we have to start with Mary Whitehouse. Freedom dies when moral anarchy takes over. That is our message. Let us get it out. The self-appointed moral referee railing against a rapidly changing society. She mobilised an army of housewives who believed the BBC was the cultural indicator for everything that was going wrong. Hiya. Hi. You are Sarah. I am. I'm Erin. Nice to meet you. Nice to whatever we do. Yes. <laughs> this. this is the Mary Whitehouse collection. It is, yes. Mary was a diligent archivist and offered her collection of letters, petitions and newspaper clippings which spanned decades to the University of Essex in Colchester. Oh wow, oh there's a lot of letters. So read this out. 22nd of March, BBC One programme, Are You Being Served? Homosexual character. And it was transmitted at 7.30. Gays on television at 7.30, Jesus. So basically, there's a mix of objections ranging from innuendo, sex education, fellatio, a gay character, and communism. She would have loved you, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I really am Mary Whitehouse's sort of dream character. Whitehouse! Out! 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 out. That's freedom! Yeah! That's freedom. In 1977, Mary infamously brought a case of blasphemous libel against gay news for a controversial poem that they published. Oh, I can see already why she's not happy. So you've got basically love between a Roman centurion and Jesus Christ. There's a lot going on here. Um, as they took him from the cross, I, the centurion, took him in my arms, the tough, lean body of a man no longer young, beardless, breathless, but well hung. The shaft still thrown. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining Mary White as reading this. I'm surprised she survived. <laughs> her glasses just sprung off her face. I would imagine today that would cause a bit of a storm, actually. I think absolutely. The editor, Dennis Lemon, was fined £500 and given a nine-month suspended jail sentence. He says, um, 
Mrs. Whitehouse is not an evil woman, but a misguided evangelist, and I don't think she represents anywhere near as many people as she claims she does, and small groups in the powerful censorship lobby just don't represent anyone but themselves. The conviction was later quashed on appeal. Later on in sort of subsequent issues, they actually had pins that you could buy sort of as a fundraiser that said gay news fights on, and it was a photograph of Mary Whitehouse. Oh, wow. Because she was fighting her political battle with her loyal supporters. But of course, the people she was up against at the time of a mi marginalised and frankly widely despised minority in the 60s and 70s, but they had their supporters as well. Absolutely. And she was their hate figure. Over the time, and I should have, I think she ended up to be a caricature of outrage. Four decades on, the struggle for minority rights continues. And one of Mary Whitehouse's original targets, the BBC, is still at the heart of the culture wars. The most recent charge is that it's a den packed full of left-wing comedians. So I am now looking up some videos from the comedian Jeff Norcott, who is a right of centre comedian. Let's have a look. I'd like to thank us also, I haven't just built my own echo chamber here. I do get a lot of my lefty friends. Give me a cheer. Thank you for coming to my show uh, and showing the uh, open-mindedness that your wing of politics used to be famed for. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, really unfortunate for, for you. I, mean, the I got run over. Kill, kills one of the only right wing comics. <laughs> Am I too woke? Yeah, I mean, obviously too woke. And the truth is, right, is I'm not like anti woke as such. I'm anti unworkable ideas or shit ideas, you know. And it, unfortunately, a lot of those to me do seem to come from that area of discourse. And it, it's another name for something that's been around a while, which is like right on, progressive, you know, uh, social justice warriors, snowflakes. It keeps morphing. It's still the same sentiment. How has woke gone too far? What kind of examples? Well, I suppose over the last few years, a good example would be Winston Churchill, right? For a very, very long time, a lot of people's favourite Britain. And then it seemed to, for most people, particularly who are outside the social media domain, that overnight he's, he's a toxic figure, you know, he's, he's, he's racist. And what happens then is a lot of people think, well, you know, I really like Winston Churchill, does that mean I'm a racist? You know, it's too quick to form a very binary view of something quite complicated. It strikes me that a lot of people from minorities with a platform, when they speak out about racism, you know, they often then get a deluge of really quite vile stuff. They'll get death threats, rape threats. If we're gonna have this discussion about people who think woke's gone too far, to do it in a way without then getting piled on with that often quite vicious abuse. Oh yeah, but that's my, my view as somebody that believes in free speech is that people should be able to express all opinions, you know, without losing their jobs. It, it's worrying to me the idea that somebody that works in, in a job that's percept, perceived more left wing would be, would be concerned about even saying that they were coming to see my, my tour show. You know, we went to the archives, University of Essex with Mary Whitehouse, and it was interesting reading the correspondence. She, she didn't like the fact homosexuality appeared on TV or the radio. Yeah. And a lot of people, were, they were scared. It's that fear of but, you know, minorities. So it's really interesting for me that you've mentioned, I, I don't think that, that being suspicious of um, or certainly having reservations about woke culture is, for me, has anything to do with minorities. It's not fear of minorities. It's, it's simply about a, a way of understanding people that's trying to move so fast. It like gets hot housed on social media, and you know things, conclusions can be reached in a very short amount of time. I mean, you mentioned Mary Whitehouse. That's the irony. Is that to me, a lot of uh, certainly some of the debate coming out of woke discourse sounds prudish in a way. You know, sound is probably according way too much power to language that actually exists. Is this debate just split among left and right lines? I don't think it's as clear cut as just being left versus right. For the right, it's, it's, a, it's a useful political approach because it forces the left on more defensive grounds and it often can cause a split between the sorts of people who are attracted to the less economic message but are frightened about social change. Paul Embry, like me, is someone who backs the Labour Party, but he believes that woke culture has been fundamentally damaging to the left and to its success. Am I too woke? Are you too woke? Yeah, am I too woke? Well, I, I wouldn't want to make it personal, but people who are now described as woke and virtue signalers 
are generally people who like to gain kudos by express, ex expressing a particular fashionable, moral or political opinion, uh, often have got no experience or no interest in grassroots political campaigning and organising and think that you know going on Twitter and, and sending a tweet condemning someone for, an ex for expressing an unfashionable view somehow you know takes the place of, of proper debate and proper argument. The people who are going on about how woke the left are and how they're obsessed with these issues, it strikes me spend far more time, far more no. time speaking about it no, with, than with, the left does. With respect, that's rubbish. I think that it's a reaction to much of the much of the comment and much of the drive for some of these fringe issues that is coming from people on the left, but it hasn't come out of a clear blue sky. You know, people didn't wake up and say, hey, let's create this thing called woke and rail against it. People now say, well, that's offensive, as if that is the moment the debate should shut down. The minute someone says, I'm offended, it means you are inherently wrong and the debate should go no further. Uh, the, I mean, these claims have always been made. It's this idea of you can't say anything anymore, which was a cliche in the 1990s political correctness gone mad. I mean, these things have always been said. Well, they may have always been said, but the reality is now they're, they're, they're having an effect. Both Jeff and Paul talk about people being cancelled for expressing socially conservative opinions. But what happens on the other side, those deemed to be too woke or too progressive? Hello. Hello. How are you? Professor Priyam Vada Gopal found herself at the centre of a firestorm after a White Lives Matter banner was flown over Burnley Stadium. I tweeted, white lives don't matter as white lives, meaning quite clearly that it wasn't whiteness that ought to give lives value. So I didn't think much about it. I went off and I logged back into Twitter a few hours later and it was just volumes of hate mail. And what you see in this dossier, and it comes with a content warning, is explicit rape threats. The N-word, the P-word, um, other racist slurs. Yeah, I mean, here's this one where I won't read it all out, but you know, listen, you ugly cow worshipping something that bathes in shit and pisses in the river of the Ganges. White lives are the only ones that matter. How would you categorise it? What is this phenomenon? So there's a real eagerness, uh, ironically, to claim the mantle of victimhood, to paint the political right or uh, white men, for instance, as the real victims of woke, cultural, left-wing, communist, socialist warriors. What is that? What, why, what is the dynamic there? The idea is that any concession of absolute power is equivalent to becoming oppressed and to losing all rights and privileges. So it's a kind of uh, offences defence, if you like, that the wall should not be breached even a little bit uh, because we will make such a song and dance about it and silence you by abuse and threats that far from the social order changing, we will not even give an inch. I mean, Mary Whitehouse clearly saw there was a culture war as she saw it yeah. going on, and she felt that she was on the losing side. I mean, although, I don't know, what do you think? Is it Culture wars are routinely declared by the right, and they are declared when the right feels itself or thinks itself or believes itself to be on the back foot from a series of claims for justice. If you think about the world as a series of uh, uh, pushing back against oppression, then culture wars have been with us from the dawn of time. Either that, or culture wars are completely made up whenever it is suitable to make it up in order to discredit a legitimate opposition. The battle between the socially conservative and the socially progressive, those now called woke, certainly isn't new. But it's louder and more aggressive than it's been, fueled by the hothouse of social media and escalated by political upheavals. But is it really a culture war? It's hard not to conclude that the most intense moments are yet to come.